Good afternoon. You're listening to Gambling with an Edge. Now here are your hosts, Bob Dancer and Richard Munchkin. Good afternoon. Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. I'm Bob Dancer. And I'm Richard Munchkin. Today our guest is Anthony Curtis, publisher of Las Vegas Advisor and Huntington Press, and frequent um, Gambling with an Edge guest. Anthony, welcome back to Gambling with an Edge. Good to be here again, guys. Before we get into a regular show, we have unfortunate news of a uh, of a friend of the show. Uh, Richard, what do you know about? Yeah, uh, Cat Holbert died this morning, and Cat um, was a very long time AP, one of the very first female card counters, um, long time professional poker player as well. Uh, to me, maybe the most interesting interview in my book, Gambling Wizards. And so she died today of a long after a long bout with cancer. So anyway, I just wanted f a lot of people who listen to the show may know her and wanted to put that out there and sorry to hear it. She was a good friend. And uh, we'll link, she's been on the show. We'll link to the episode where she was on in the past. You know, I think it was kind of testimony to, to her that she was one of the chapters in your book. I mean, you know, she had to be seriously uh, impactful and good at what she did to uh, to have made that book. I mean, you know, we you picked the top people. And uh, yeah, it's sad news. I only heard about it from you just now. And, and I'm sorry to hear that, too. OK, we've had lots of questions, Anthony, about James Gross Jean's books. Uh, do, do you know anything? Well, you're gonna jump right to that, man. You're right into the into the cauldron, right? Uh, That's why yeah. you're here today. James Grosjean book is the reason you're here, among others. Yeah. Well, okay. So let me give you let me give you the update. Um, I, and I have talked about this before. There are two books. Um, they are now they are now basically have their titles. All right. The first one that's going to be available to the the general market will be, and it'll be priced, you know, well under $30. Um, it's going to be called The Ultimate Report. And then the book, in quotations, the book for Casino Carney Games. Now that comes from James's, you know, he likes to take shots at everybody who talks about playing blackjack by the book, right? You know, that kind of thing. So that was the title we came up for that. Uh, that book is essentially done. I've edited the whole thing. It's 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 vintage gross gene. It's it's just terrific. Um, it's funny. It's it's clever. It gets into the strategies on how to play these games, reduce the the edges from twenty percent plus down to you know single digits below five percent. Um, not so much beating these games. That will be the next book. It'll be called the Ultimate Report Lockdown Edition. Now the reason that the first book is not out yet, and we're we're absolutely going to put out the first book. We call it the Basic Strategy Book. We're going to put that book out first so people can get a taste of it and then, you know, move to the lockdown edition if they want to. There's going to be a big price tag on that. We haven't determined yet. Um, but when I edited it, when I read it, it was, you know, tremendous. But some of these, quote, basic strategies were five pages long. And, you know, I, I because Gross Gene wants to be, you know, perfect. You know, he wants to have everything just right. So I went back to him and I said, look, you know, I really think we need uh, summation chapter. I said, I really think we need a chapter that takes these things and really cooks them down. I mean, tremendously cooks them down to just a few things that you can do to get 90% of the value. And I'll be darned if he didn't uh, agree. And he was like, yeah, he goes, okay, you know, take a little bit of work, but yeah, I'm going to work on it. So he's working on the final chapter right now. And that chapter is going to be the one that really makes it valuable to the market because Truthfully, as good as these strategies are that he came up with, and as great as they are, um, most people won't be able to do it or follow it unless you're really, really dedicated. So these, as he calls them, easy peasy strategies uh, are in the works right now. And as soon as they're ready, that book's ready to be released. So it should be out before Christmas? Absolutely. Without question. I mean, the only way it wouldn't be is if, you know, he goes missing, as he's been known to do from time to time. <laughs> And he doesn't submit the chapter. The minute he submits the chapter, we will uh, we'll put it together and we'll send it to the printer, and you know we'll we'll make it available to the market. Um, the one other thing that we're that we run up against here 
is there's no graphics in this book. The only graphics we want, I mean, it's full of charts and tables and things like that, but the only graphics we want are pictures of the games themselves because, and those photos are gonna be, hopefully they're gonna be full page spreads at the start of each chapter. And you cannot believe this, but we've run into a lot of pushback from the developers of the games, not wanting to provide us with a photo just to use in the book. <laughs> no reason for it. They won't say why. And I put in front of them, I mean, do you know what Beat the Dealer did for Blackjack? You know, I yeah. mean, do you know what this will do for your obscure games? You know, so, so here's what I'm going to do. I made up my mind when you said we we're going to talk about this. I'm going to tell you the games that are in the book. And if there's any photographers out there who have some photos and they want to send them in, we want the layouts only. That's what we're looking at. We're looking for the layouts. Now, we're going to be able to get them somehow. We're going to go out and find them. We're going to get them. We'll take them ourselves if we have to. But if anybody wants to get, send us one, we'll give them a photo credit. And we'll give them a free book. How about that? All right. So these are the games. Some of them will be easy, obviously. Um, three card poker, Caribbean stud. You know, these will not be too difficult. Let it ride. Crazy for poker, four card poker, flop poker, Mississippi stud, and here's where it gets tough. Cali low ball, jackpot hold'em, crisscross poker, heads up hold'em, and then ultimate Texas hold'em. So those are the books we're gonna do. If anybody, especially for these obscure ones, if you've got a really good you know, table cover uh, view, uh, orientation would be, um, uh, what's the opposite of horizontal? <laughs> Vertical. Portrait. Vertical. Portrait, landscape, yeah. Portrait or vertical, yeah. Portrait or vertical, up and down. Let's, so let's call it up and down. But if you got one, send it in. If we can use it, we'll give you credit and we'll send you a book. How about that? Well, good. Such we're a all deal. Looking, that's... We're all looking good for the author's portrait that's going to be on the back cover. This is going to be interesting. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, yeah, that'll be, that'll be something funny, I guarantee you. Okay. Um, do, do you want to know what else we got coming? Sure. Yeah. I mean, we still, we've got a couple of other things. I mean, real quick, the next one is going to be the one we do every year, which is the, the Vegas rights. You know, there's not, there's not much gambling in there. There's some, this is something we do with the city where a bunch of the professional writers get together. Last year, Bob Dancer had a, had a representation in this anthology. So that's going to be, you know, one of them coming up. Um, gambling 102, we're going to be, um, adding a new chapter to Shackelford's book. It's on the advantage slots. Some people will cringe when they hear that. Other people will go, oh boy. But uh, we talked about it. The word's out on, on these games. You know, people can find it. So uh, we're going to have a, a full chapter uh, for with Gambling 102. I see somebody over there shaking their head. <laughs> well, no, I'm just, I'm laughing because, uh, you know, six, eight months ago, a year ago, I was telling people, I guarantee you eventually this is going to happen. Somebody eventually is going to write a book about it. Yeah. Um, well, we discussed it. Look, you know, I mean, we've, it's, it, I have to walk a narrow line here about what I say and what I don't say. So I don't hurt my friends and everything else. Uh, he created the chapter and said, ask me what I thought. We looked at it. We talked it over. We talked with actually some players who are out there in the field. We thought they'd be really pissed off. And they said, nope, they go, that information's out there. They go, there's nothing wrong with it. Go ahead, you have our blessing. So we're gonna publish it. So those who have always wondered what it's all about, it's gonna be in the next edition of uh, Gambling 102, which will be the third edition. And um, I continue to work on all about sports betting, Blair Rodman's book. Blair Rodman's book, is what about Blair Rodman's book? When's it's that called, coming? It's called All About Sports Betting. And it's uh, basically a beginner's book on sports betting. Uh, although there's lots of cool stories. You know, a lot of people don't know that that Blair, after he played with uh, Stanford Wong's team and Alan Brown's team, you know, we all played on the tournament teams together. Um, he got together with a big sports betting crew that won four or $5 million and um, before they got shut down. And this was run by Alan Brown as well. Alan became one of the biggest bettors in the world. You know, some say second or third behind Billy Walters, and maybe Chuck Sharp. Um, and um, and Blair played on that team, and there's some really good, interesting stories uh, about that team in this book as well. So at this time of year, usually you and Frank hit some football contests. Now, uh, there might be too late to enter this year's events, but there have been some inter interesting results so far. What can you tell us? Well, the interesting thing was last year, um, there were a couple of big overlays 
you know, meaning that there was more money guaranteed than was collected in entry fees. So the casinos um, or the sports books, uh, specifically Circa on one on Survivor, this is last year, and William Hill on their college football contest, had to put in more money than they took in. It's called a equity overlay. Um, so after that happened, nobody expected it to happen again this year, but I'll be darned if, uh, if it didn't. And uh, Circa, again, is uh, one of the victims of it in uh, the uh, million this year, the Circa million fell short by about 1,300 uh, players. So there's $1.3 million additional in that, in that pool. William Hill, I don't have the figures right in front of me, but I know they fell short also. They fell short by about 150,000, which is additional in that pool as well. So we had some, you know, a couple of really good juicy overlays. Um, the bad news is that it's been an absolute bloodbath for the tournament players, the contest players. It's been a bloodbath the first two weeks in Circus Survivor, which was not an overlay, by the way, they needed 6,000 and they got 6,133, but they're giving back all the money. After two weeks, 4,100 people are out of that contest, including my six entries. I'm out. After two weeks, I'm out. I lost five in the first week. And I had, I don't know if anybody watched the games. We had, not I, I was had some partners in this, Frank and I and, and a couple others. We had uh, Cleveland Browns. Do you see what happened there? They were with one with with one and a half minutes to go. They were up by thirteen. They were putting up the winning percentage for them at ninety nine point five percent. They missed the, they missed an extra point. Uh, the team that they were playing, um, I forget who it was, scored a touchdown. Recovered an extra point. I mean, recovered an onside kick and threw another touchdown pass and made both extra points and beat them by one. <laughs> and so this is the sort of thing that's been going on here. And just for some perspective, in the first two weeks, I, thought, I just looked up some information this morning. In the first two weeks of the Survivor Contest, when it started in 2020, 42% were out in the first two weeks. Last year, 27% were out. And this year, 67% of the field is out in the first two weeks. Amazing. Now, you know, the, 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 the favorites are losing. That's what's happening. You know, in Survivor, you pick favorites because it's not against you. They just have to win. It's not against the point spread. So the favorites are winning. The casinos are, uh, the sports books are cleaning up, which they always do. And, you know, well, wait a minute, I got that wrong, actually, but they're still doing, they're still doing well. They're still doing well. Um, and um, I don't know. I don't know. What I did. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I just put my hands up because I'm just going to sit and watch for the the rest of the season when it comes to Survivor. All right. Then, um, Richard, you heard about a Chattanooga game. What was that all about? Well, yeah. So um, I, this is an interesting uh, thing to talk about, I think. So uh, this weekend, there was a game where at one sports book, a particular team was minus 980, and at MGM, they had that same team at plus 800. Obviously, a mistake line. So a guy, uh, he betted on the app for 200, and they took the bet. And then I guess he, he went to kiosks and um, made a, a bunch more bets on the kiosks and, uh, you know, Got down quite, they left this lineup for six hours. So who knows how much money got bet into this bad line. Anyway, his payoff was around $20,000. And he went to try to collect and they told him uh, that his account was shut down and that it was obviously a mistake line and they had turned the whole thing over to gaming. Uh, now, at this point, we're recording this on Tuesday. Gaming has said that they're not going to make a decision until midweek sometime. So they haven't heard back as to what's going to happen here. Now, so it's when these kinds of things happen, like we've had Frank and, and you, Anthony, Spanky, uh, Captain Jack, all say like they wouldn't bet into these kind of bad lines because they're obviously a mistake. But um, and if this was a good sports book, like someone like Circa, I can certainly see that. 
But if it's a sports book like MGM, where accounts are kind of, kind of like toilet paper, you can just lose them really easily, uh, you have to weigh, well, what's my actual EV? And is it worth losing this account? You know, if his EV was $15,000 or something, was his account worth it? You know, prob probably it was. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Anthony? Well, I don't, you know, these things are always dodgy. Uh, you know, they, they put up notices saying that, you know, obvious mistake lines that are bet into will be, you know, the they'll be canceled. You know, the bets will be canceled. Uh, Wait, is that in Nevada? I know they do that in other states, but in Nevada, they have these signs that say, you know, tickets that, play as written or whatever. No, yeah, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I just assumed that this was, you know, uh, countrywide, you know, whatever. MGM's in a lot of different, different uh, uh, jurisdictions. So I just assumed that that was it. This happened in, this happened right here in Nevada. I don't know. I mean, oh, you said it'll go to Nevada Gaming to make that decision. Uh, it no already has. They yeah. haven't said anything yet. Well, I don't know. It depends on what they do. You know, we've seen this in the past where up and comers like FanDuel and, and DraftKings have said we're going to pay it for goodwill. You know, which might be in their best interest to do. Twenty thousand is not that much when you consider how much they're spending on all their promo and everything else. It almost seems like they should go ahead and pay it simply to, you know, for again for goodwill, so they don't look like idiots and they don't look, you know, nasty. Uh, well, not just goodwill, but if you if you fat finger the app and you accidentally make the wrong bet, you're screwed. You can't change it. Yeah. You know, so. Well, I'm That's, not, uh, good for the goose. Yeah, I'm not arguing with you. I mean, I think they should have to pay it, especially since they left it up for so long. You know, I yeah. think they should have to pay it. That should be a cost of doing business. But I don't think that they are uh, compelled to do so. And I think they probably do have have certain, um, you know, wording somewhere. I, I would think they do. We'll see what gaming has to say. Um, yeah, well, this guy loses a count. Should he have done it? Um, I think so. There's so many places to bet. Why not? You know, why not give it a go? And if you don't really care, I mean, you you said if you're with a good book, okay, like Circa, right? Uh, but I mean, how important is one out at MGM to this guy when maybe this 20,000 gets through? You know, that's the big decision that everybody always has to make. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, fooey on them. I, I mean, I hope, I hope they're made to pay it. I think they ought to, you know? Yeah, I, yeah. They should I have- agree. I agree. Now, and I remember like there was that, Korean game where people were betting after the game was obviously finished and they and uh that did those did get voided which I I can absolutely see that you know Come but I there were certainly games in the past where this kind of thing has happened and they've had to pay in Nevada that I'm aware of so yeah I've had situations where I mean I remember one time I was at uh, Arizona Charlie's on Decatur and I liked to game at halftime and I I liked the team minus three and a half and i came out and on that board it was plus three and a half it was backwards they had it backwards and i bet it and it was only you know i mean it was just they're goofing around it's for a couple hundred bucks or something but uh it lost it lost you know i had plus three and a half and a minus three and a half thing and it, it lost horribly and <laughs> my money back you know what i mean i mean I, I had the best of it but i lost so i lost you know what i mean so i don't see why they should have an out there i don't we uh we talked earlier about the football contest where it's too late to get into them, but football parties will keep going on until the Super Bowl. Uh, do you have any idea where the best place to go to a football party is, Anthony? I'll tell you what, every year for the past maybe 25, um, I go out every, I dread this. I kind of dread this. I dread the first Monday night football game because I've got to try to see as many parties as I can. And I, I travel all around the city and I run in and out. And sometimes I go with a friend who waits for me at the door and, you know, and I run out in and out and check them. On the second Monday night football game of the year, I go to all the strip clubs and check all of their parties. So we've had two Monday nights. And so I've done all these things. I've probably been to about 30 of them all together. And uh, I can just tell you, it's just not like it used to be. You know, I mean, the Monday night football parties used to be one of the biggest deals in Vegas, and that's how the casinos promoted. And they gave away hot dogs, they gave away beer, they sold dogs for a dollar. You know, you just they 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 had concerts. The Rio used to have concerts in their round, 
their round uh, showroom. And I saw, I think I saw Eddie Money there. I think I saw, I, I forget. I mean, I, I, I saw a bunch of really good shows there. And these were all part of Monday Night Football. Um, there's nothing like that anymore. There's only one thing like that. There's only one big old time party and that's at South Point. And South Point's been doing it for years. It's free to get in. Um, they give away a thousand dollars in drawings. The, the place is packed. It's on all the screens. Hot, hot dogs are a buck fifty. Beers are two dollars. All the beer you can drink is fifteen dollars. Um, it's old style, and you know, hats off to them for doing it. Um, a couple of the other places that had parties going a little bit. They weren't amazing, but they were they were decent. Uh, Rampart, Silverton, Gold Coast, and at Silver Sevens was the best beer deal. They had uh, bottles of Bud for seventy seven cents during the game. Yeah. So, those were the best things I found there. In the in the uh, strip clubs last night, I went to uh, 10 or 12 of them. Um, it's not, a dirty job, but someone's got to do it, Anthony. Not as much fun as you would think. I want <laughs> you. Not as much fun as you would think. And those two are really diminished. I mean, there used to be some really good ones around. Treasures, for example, used to have a giant buffet. It was great. It wasn't even open. The place was closed. It didn't open until 7 o'clock. Um, Spearmint Rhino used to have a party. It didn't open until 7 o'clock. The one constant here, I would say the, you know, the, the, uh, south, the south point of, of strip clubs is Sapphire, where it's 25 bucks to get in. You get two beers, I mean, two drinks, uh, good drinks, you know, like not quite top shelf, but, but better stuff. Um, you get a buffet, a really good buffet. And I mean, I'm not talking about hot dogs and pizza. I mean, they had, uh, they had uh, some sort of chicken and rice. They had meatloaf and mashed potatoes. They had, I mean, you know, there's no, buff there are very few buffets out there now. Well, Monday nights, you can get a great buffet at uh, Sapphire's. Had a lot of their, their girls were serving and the, the place was full. And uh, so Sapphire's was real good. Um, those would be the only other one Hustler had something going. I think it was 20 bucks and you could then buy beers for a dollar or something along those lines. But really it's South Point uh, for regular and Sapphire if you wanna to go to one of the, the gentlemen's clubs. So there you go on the, on the contest. I mean, on the uh, parties. I keep being I'm reminded- I'm surprised of... that, that they wouldn't even open till seven o'clock. I mean, do they, I guess they feel like they just didn't get any business because of Monday Night Football or? No, well, they used to get a lot of business for Monday Night Football and Everybody's just coming out of the shutdown differently. You know, I mean, if you want to talk about who has hit the hardest during the pandemic shutdown, you know, the casinos for sure, but also the uh, strip clubs, because, you know, they had to close down completely. And, you know, their business ground to a complete halt. And they all came back with, you know, differently with different plans. And Sapphire is the biggest and Sapphire picked up where they left off. And, you know, they're, they're out there promoting hard again. They got their pool and the whole thing. Places like Treasures that, you know, they're doing it in a different way. You know, they've got their steakhouse and they're they're going to rely on things like that. And they don't care about Monday Night Football now. And we've seen that in the casinos as well. There used to be parties everywhere. And now it's just, you know, they're just gatherings, if anything. There's just no real deals. And um, those that's part of the changes that have happened after the pandemic, which I'm sorry to see. It's, you know, it's negative to the, the way Vegas used to be. It used to be, you know, so much fun and cheap and everything else. And it's, it's getting tougher. Johnny Carson used to say about strip clubs that if you've seen one, you've seen them both. So um, yeah. with that, we're going to have a, uh, a commercial break. We'll be back talking to Anthony Curtis. The South Point has more than 10,000 games returning at least 99%. This is more such games than anyone else has. To celebrate the upcoming South Point 400 NASCAR, event, the September promotion is the earning of City Lights Moonshine. You can earn up to three, three bottles weekly, Sunday through Saturday, by earning 1,200 points on video poker slots. You keep the points. There's a mix of different moonshine flavors. Now you can choose between bar candy, key lime, lychee, orange, original, and plum. If you're serious about card counting, the Blackjack Apprenticeship Membership is a great way to learn, train, network, and get the resources you need to succeed. We've had quite a few guests on Gambling with an Edge who exclusively trained and got their start through Blackjack Apprenticeship. Check out the website at blackjackapprenticeship.com. They have member forums, training software, and guides to help you learn. 
So that's blackjackapprenticeship.com and you will find a link in the show notes. Videopoker.com is the best place to play lots of games. If you sign up for the gold membership, $8.95 a month or $79.95 a year, this allows you to get correction on most of the games. The game of the week is Lucky Eights. It's a 10 coins per line game where you get bonuses for three or more eights, including full houses with three eights. If you get trips or higher, dealt approximately every 35 hands, you get to spin the wheel, which includes amounts ranging from 108, 88 coins to very occasionally 18,888. Induces wild variations, you spin the wheel on dealt flushes or higher, which occur every 42 hands on average. You'll need to figure out the strategy for yourself, but it appears to be possible with simple algebra. With 88445, for example, it must be correct just to hold the 8s because the bonus is on 3 or more 8s. Induces wild variations where you would normally hold the suited Jack-10-9 over a pair of 8s, or maybe even Jack-10-9-8 in this game, surely holding the pair of 8s are better. There aren't that many combinations to consider, and most of our listeners are good enough with basic math that they can do it. If you're interested in getting an edge at sports betting, then unabated.com is a great resource for you. Founded by frequent Gambling with an Edge guests, Captain Jack and Rufus Peabody, unabated.com is designed for both new and experienced sports bettors. The real-time odd screen tools and calculators take a lot of guesswork out of trying to quantify your edge. There's also plenty of free education and instruction to help you along your journey to becoming a sharper sports better. You can currently take advantage of a seven-day free trial to decide if premium membership at unabated.com is right for you. All right, we're back with Anthony Curtis. Yeah, before you uh, before you ask your question or next, I want to clear up what I said earlier. I mangled that a little bit about the uh, about the favorites in the contest, and I said the casinos are are cleaning up as well. And I didn't I was right about that, but I didn't quite say it right. You know, most of the public I'm talking about regular betting. The public tends to bet favorites. So, so with all the favorites losing, they're obviously really upsetting the contest pools, but they're also doing very well. You know, on regular tickets because uh, the customers are losing. All right. I got my start as a video poker teacher at what was then called the Fiesta and later became known as the Fiesta Rancho, um, which is closed for the pandemic. It hasn't reopened and there's some news about it. Uh, Anthony, what can you tell us? Well, the news is that um, basically four station casinos properties are not going to come back, you know, in their current form. Um, and most people know that Texas Station and the two Fiestas uh, never reopened and that they were going to be raised. And um, that's in process of happening right now. You know, they're, uh, both uh, Texas Station and Fiesta Henderson have been demolished uh, already. And it's interesting how they did it. They didn't do it, you know, with all the fanfare. Those of us who have been around here, you know, they make a big deal out of implosions and things like that. There was no dynamite. There was no big boom. There was no big announcement. There was nothing. They just went in there with bulldozers and knocked the things down. Um, they're, they want to sell that land and they don't want, it's a defensive move. They don't want those casinos to be ready made for somebody else to come in and uh, compete against them. Um, the next one will be um, ranch, uh, uh, Fiesta Rancho probably. And then Wild Wild West closed suddenly uh, within the last 10 days. It just boom. They said, we're closing in three days. And I went there on closing night because usually closing night's a big deal. I mean, there was, there was nobody there. Nobody cared. Wild Wild West. Adios, man. <laughs> we don't care. Are they knocking that down too? Yeah, that one they're going to build. Uh, the plan is, at least from what's been released, is they want to build a big, big resort there. You know, that's going to finally be their, you know, quote, strip-based resort, uh, something on, you know, on the order of Green Valley Ranch or Red Rock, you know, resort. So, you know, stations getting rid of all their, their little mom and pop joints and, you know, they want to, they kind of want to go big time. The one they're building up in the, uh, the, what is it, the uh, south, uh, the southwest uh, Durango station, that's supposedly another high-end 
kind of you know place and that's uh, the direction they want to go and that's how they've done everything you know i mean they're getting rid of their buffets they're they they're getting rid of their promotions you know they want to be they want to be strip casino that's what they want to be and that's that's what this is all about well, the Palms was close to that. It seems odd for them to have sold it. Well, the Palms, they just they just made one mistake after another. I mean, they just had everything wrong there. And I think that it was such a thorn in their side. They just wanted out. And if they could get any kind of deal to get out of that, and they did, you know, with San Manuel. And I, I, I think they just wanted to cut bait there, man. That was, that was a cut bait and get out. But I'll tell you, man, but, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're rough, man. I, uh, I just recently went in. I had uh, like a hundred thousand points on a on a club card, and all of a sudden I had zero. And uh, I know the rules, you know. You got to keep the the card alive. And I've been playing around the corner at Wild Wild West, and all of a sudden, you know, it's gone. And I, I said, "Do I have any recourse?" And they're like, "No." <laughs> and I it's, so I kept pushing and pushing, and finally I got through to a manager, and they're they're checking it. But I mean, if I had to make, I don't think I'm pick them. I think I'm a dog for them to to reinstate the points. They're just, they're evil. <laughs> well, wait, but so you had been playing within the last six months, right? Yeah. I've been, At Wild Wild West. Yeah, I think it was an error on their part, but they didn't want to hear any, anything about it. Now, I'm, I'm happy to come back on this show. If they end up making it right, then, then I'll come back and say they did. But they just want to take everything, man. They don't want to give anything away. That's the way they are over there now. Now, back when the Wild Wild West, which is at Tropicana, basically at the 15 freeway. There used to be a big truck stop there back when it was called King 8. Is King that eight. gone away too? King 8, Is that, that was, well, there was, it was originally, Wild Wild West was the King 8 truck stop. And, um, it, you know, they, they had the casino there. When I first come, started coming to this town, when I turned 21, and I'd come from California, and we'd always, that'd be our first stop, the King 8. I went with these guys who were older than me, and they're like, this is where you go to win. This is where you go to do this and that, you know, and I didn't know much better. I was like, okay, let's go there. And it was the King 8 truck stop, casino and truck stop. And when it turned into Wild Wild West, they kept the truck stop there. And that truck stop is still open the last I saw. Now, I don't know. It's not connected to the thing. It's really off to the side across the street. So I don't think they're going to change it. I think they do good business there with the truckers. But, you know, we'll see. If they, they turn it into a mega resort type thing, you know. A real mega resort, then maybe they'll need all that land. But uh, I haven't heard anything about it. That was always the place with the cheapest gas in Las Vegas, by far, right? It was for a long time, and then uh, we did that uh, YouTube video on it, and uh, all of a sudden, it other places started doing. I don't think it was because of us, but it was always just the timing that other places started beating it. And I was like, great, we did this video about how cheap the gas is, and now they're getting beat by everybody. So it's, it's, it's often good, but not, you know, not always the best. But um, as of now, it's, it's still there. You know, as far as I know, there's only two truck stop casinos ever in Vegas or since I've been here. And the other is the Alamo, which is over by the Silverton. So you got the Alamo truck stop and you got this, you know, the Wild Wild West, which was formerly King 8. But I think they're both still there. So it's not in Las Vegas, but it's close to Las Vegas. A casino in Arizona is putting up football lines that are different from anywhere else. What do you know about this, Anthony? Uh, well, I didn't know anything about it until uh, Richard sent me uh, sent me a link. So it's uh, Casino del Sol in uh, in Arizona, right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah and they're in Tucson. Okay, so go ahead, explain it. You you knew more well, about yeah. So they decided to put up. Uh, lines you can bet any two football teams against each other that aren't playing each other <laughs> so uh which i think is a neat idea um but i also think whenever people try new things whether it's a new table game or whatever there are often opportunities for sharp betters to consider things maybe they didn't think of and maybe get an itch yeah, I looked at this. I looked at the re, at the release, and it looks like okay. So let's say this week, I, I haven't looked at the the list yet, but let's say the Jets are playing the Giants, and the Packers are playing the the Lions. You could bet the Lions against the Jets, even though they're not playing each other, and they're just going to take their team totals for whatever they score, 
and they're going to make a line on it. Is that how you read it? That's what I think they're going to yeah, do. Yeah, that's that's what I think is happening. I mean, <laughs> uh, I haven't been able to verify it, but that's that's what the article makes it sound like. Yeah. Well, some of these people that are really good at you know at making lines and are able to you know look at team totals and do yeah, I agree with you. There's probably going to be opportunities. It sounds fun. I mean, it sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, I'd call a friend and say, okay, my best team against your best team, let's go, you know, and, and you go make the real bet. You know, I, I think it's, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. And, and um, I think it'll give them extra business because people want to bet on their favorite team and maybe against the team they hate and, you know, who knows. Yeah. Um, it's going to open up man to man uh, opportunities as well. Like I just said, you know, you don't have to go to the book to do it. You can call your friend and go, what a great idea. You know, yeah, yeah. I love the Ravens. You love the the Eagles. Whatever. All right. So let's let's have this bet. <laughs> I mean, I I just think it's a great idea to stimulate action. I, I I like it. Yeah. Now Tucson is in southern Arizona, which is a good five hour drive from Vegas if you drive fast. Now, do they have a an a mobile app where you just have to go over the border a few miles and able to make it, and that would be about a half hour drive from Vegas? My guess is yes. It seems like everybody has mobile apps. So they, and 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 I don't know which uh, book. Like I don't know what uh, book is actually at that particular casino. Right. So Arizona uh, mobile betting is is allowed, and I know that because we are uh, here at Huntington Press. We are in the process of being licensed there to be an affiliate, marketing affiliate. And I can tell you, it is the most gruesome process of any state we've done it in. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Fingerprinting and, and, and all of this background checking and everything else. But they do have mobile betting. But it's a, as Richard says, uh, it's a matter of which place has it. It's not like they all have it. Some do and some don't. So I'm not sure about this particular one. Well, also, I'm guessing that that, that particular casino does not have one of the big nationwide books because if they did why wouldn't they do this in every state agreed yeah so maybe they have their own book which makes it even more likely that you would find a weak line yeah better yeah exactly but if it takes off uh they could easily have this everywhere next year or so it's a um, copycat business, and this doesn't sound like something you could uh, copyright. I think I've heard of this before. I mean, I think I've heard of this happening on in some occasions, but maybe not. I mean, it just seems logical. I, I don't know why it wouldn't have been around before, but perhaps maybe it's maybe it's brand new. I don't know. All right. So Richard and I frequently do listener mail, so we have some. Uh, mailbag questions that we're going to ask Anthony to help us out with. One said, my friend accidentally hit a W2G on video roulette, bet $600 on red, $600 on black, uh, at the same time for free play purposes, without realizing that this would produce a W2G. I'm backing them, so this free play was actually mine. So, two questions. Is there a way for me to claim or transfer ownership for this W2G for taxes rather than my friend having to? And B, they broke even on this one spin, go figure, but now they have a W2G. How would this be taken care of for taxes in his name? Seems crazy to have to pay the $300 or so for this. My friend is not a professional gambler. I, I should think not. So I have my own comments, but Anthony, you're the our guest this time. What do you think about this stupid bet? I think it's a stupid bet. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I look the, the the tax ramifications. I don't know. I mean, we have a, a book, uh, tax advice for gamblers, and uh, I guess maybe something in there. I don't know the answer to this one at all. I know that. Any time that we've done by me, we, me and get people I've played with, we always deal with taxes, you know, straight up. And, you know, we're able to to uh, make deals with one another that makes it right. But I don't know how this would be treated 
And I am very much against uh, that red black thing. I think it makes absolutely no sense at all. It's obvious as hell what you're doing. You're just going to be hated and only bad things can happen like this or a zero or a double zero. But anyway, go ahead, Richard. <laughs> Well, uh, also, I would say I don't think the um, listener realizes that if you had just made one $600 bet on red or black, you're going to get a W2G because they count the payoff as $1,200 when you win the bet. So, yeah, it's it's doubly stupid. <laughs> it's doubly uh, stupid. But uh, well, there is some form that um, the big slot teams used to use. Right. It's that, called 5754. There you go. Yeah, that right. says, and, and if that doesn't work, because if it has to be, I don't know, if that doesn't qualify for that, if worse comes to worse, you could always uh, just give a 1099 to the other guy and say, I paid him $1,200 or whatever. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, 36 out of 38 times you're going to break even on this. And the other two times you're going to lose $1,200. So there's never going to be a win and you need to pay taxes all the time. So this might qualify as one of the stupidest bets ever. <laughs> um, the, uh, but still, if you want to do this, you can, uh, you can bet smaller amounts so that whatever you win isn't going to be 12, 1200 for, for non gamblers. Um, this actually might make sense, assuming they're betting small enough, uh, if they're betting, you know, $250 on each side and they do it enough times to go through the entire, um, amount of free play you have the, you're going to get your free play minus the five and a quarter percent. And, but it's a procedure that can be described to a non gambler. Whereas, uh, you know, how to play even a good video poker game well enough to uh, cash out a higher percentage than that, that's going to take a while. And so it can work, especially if you're doing it on a machine where uh, they're not closely monitored and you just put in 250 on one side and 250 on the other side, your result is over in, uh, you know, a minute, and then you do it again, you do it again, you might want to move machines so that it doesn't get a big hit all on one, but it's, it's not terrible if you're involved non gamblers. If you are, uh, if somebody is gambling with any kind of a, never mind an edge, if they're gambling with a, a clue, um, they, um, uh, this is not a particularly good way. Let me add something to that. Um, way back when I was playing tournaments, and I was playing with, with some groups. They Sometimes you would qualify through action or amount of time on game. And the group didn't want to. I, I never agreed with this, by the way. Um, I always thought we should just play away. But, you know, some others in the group didn't want to. Uh, and I was the youngest, so I didn't have much of a say. The youngest, go figure. Huh? But anyway, they um, the way we would do it, is certainly the same guy doesn't make the same bet, whether you're talking about, you know, do and don't on the crap table or red and black on, on roulette. We have two different people, one on each side, and we didn't make those bets uniform. They were different. I mean, you know, one would be a little more, one would be a little less. I mean, it would get, there'd be some, you know, variance there, but you'd essentially get the same result. And, you know, you got to disguise it a little bit. You can't just go in and do it unless you're saying like you're on a machine, that a machine can't tell. And then, you know, that's something different. Well, but the other thing is, um, I mean, first of all, you could just bet all 38 numbers, uh, you know, with, with small enough that the payoff isn't going to be $1,200 and do that for a few spins. And then you don't have the green problem of losing both bets. Um, but the other thing is, like, the edge on craps is so much less than the edge on right. roulette. So why do it on a roulette? as opposed to on a crap machine. Yeah, that's the best point right there. That's good. <laughs> yeah, we never did it on roulette. We did it on a dice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or if they have Baccarat machines. Oh, I don't know if they have Baccarat machines now. Well, Baccarat was the best. I mean, that was the best way to, uh, to you know, basically wash your way through to get, to get invites. Baccarat was, was good. 
Okay. In our last mailbag show, we mentioned Legends Bay, which is a luxury casino opening in the Sparks area of Reno. We got a trip report from a listener about that. Uh, the opinion expressed are his own. Uh, he did not expressly give me permission to share his name, so I won't. But what he says is, Legends Bay is nice, but they're understaffed and still getting their act together. They have one nice restaurant, Duke's, which has potential, but my meal there fell a bit short on service. Also, they are very small with, pl with plenty of slots and video poker, but only 10 table game setups and no poker room. The High Limit Video Poker at Atlantis recently updated their machine and changed their pace schedules so that they were 10 coin machines rather than five coin machines. This means five coins returns a royal of $1,250 instead of 4,000. But if you bet the full 10 coins, you get 8,000. Uh, so this is annoying if playing five coins on their machine was right at the edge of your bankroll. This reader suggest that Peppermill remains the best overall place in town. Either of you have any comments on this? Where is this in the, um, did they build this where the Carl's uh, Silver Club used to be? Is that where this is? Or is this someplace else? Do you guys know? Uh, well, I've been there. Because uh, it's not, yeah, it, you've been there? Well, I've been next to there. They, there is a Peppermill casino in uh, Sparks, which is a uh, nice place. And this is like a quarter mile from there. It's along the freeway. Okay. And so it's in a shopping center. It's in a relatively new shopping center with high end stores. So the casino opened up without a hotel. But if you're a big enough player, they will put you up in. Uh, there's decent hotels within the shopping center. Right. Uh, well, in Sparks, I used to go to Sparks. I used to go to, you know, go to John Askawaga's. You know, there was always games there to play. They had lots of tournaments. Um, I, I, see some, I, I love John Askawaga's. <laughs> yeah, they, they had the greatest pan roast uh, on the planet in uh, Big John's Oyster Bar. I haven't been there for a long time. I uh, got the boot there. Uh, quite a while ago for playing tournaments, uh, I got a call from John Jr. who said, uh, you know what, we think we don't want you to come play our tournaments anymore. I says, hey man, I go, you know, your, your people love me. I, you know, all of them were in their 50s and 60s and I was in my 20s back then. And I go, they love me, I'm really nice to them. He goes, you really are. But he goes, we don't want you here anymore. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I like the area, I like Sparks, I've always liked that. I can, all I can say is when a new casino opens up, there's just all kinds of, you know, burps and hiccups and, and that kind of thing. And especially these days with the understaffing everywhere, it's, it's, it's just a problem, unfortunately. All right. Last question. Uh, I just learned about California Blackjack, where the game is played in a card room and bankrolled by players instead of the house. Have you ever played this variant? And if you have, what are your thoughts? And in your opinion, why hasn't this happened in Las Vegas? Well, uh, why? first of all, why would a casino want the players to bank the games? Yeah. Uh, you know, that's their whole reason for being there. So now if your question is, they, they had a million variations of Blackjack, uh, California 22 and 21st Century Blackjack, all these different games. Um, why haven't any of them spread? I don't know. They're not as good as regular blackjack, although a lot of blackjack variants have spread. So there are a bunch of different blackjack variants out there, like uh, blackjack switch and things like that. And so, yeah, this, this questioner might be, you know, he might be interested in the idea of the banking. You know, like, oh, that sounds fun. And Richard makes a great point. You know, the casinos are the bank. And, you know, they're not allowed to, the card clubs aren't allowed to bank games in a lot of these states or weren't. And so players would come in and do it. And a lot of players uh, made a lot of money doing that, you know, and they put together their syndicates and all. 
I think the only thing that I, that comes to mind that's similar to that that you can do in in Nevada would be uh, probably Pygow, right? I mean, you know, because are you still allowed to bank Pygow? Yeah, the bank. I think it still moves. I mean, I don't know. I haven't played it in a long time, but I, I hadn't heard anything that changes. You know, the bank moves, and players can actually bank if they want. But that's, I think, that's about the only one and that I know of. Yeah, as Richard implied, the basic reason they did this in the California was because they had to. The cas casinos were not allowed by law to deal the game where they were the bank. So if they don't have to, they won't. All right. Thank you, Anthony. Mm -hmm. At the end of our show, we have a recommended section. So Richard, do you have anything to recommend to our audience this time? Yeah, you know, uh, for years since I moved to Las Vegas, I have my internet was coming from Cox Cable, and they are horrible, and and I uh, always sort of hated the fact that they had a monopoly. So I really didn't have a choice. I, if you wanted good internet, you kind of had to have Cox Cable, and uh, finally there is a little bit of competition. T-Mobile now has this hub you can put in your house and you can get 5g internet you know basically through the uh cell towers and so i tried it i've had it about two weeks it's been excellent i was getting the same kind of speeds that i was getting from cox uh it has not gone down at all in the time that i've had it i have read that some people in some places Maybe they don't have a cell tower close enough, and so, you know, it might be a problem. But they have this thing called a two-week test drive, and they'll send you this thing for free, and you try it for a couple of weeks, and then if you like it, you can switch over, which is exactly what I did. And so now I'm paying 50 bucks a month instead of 90 bucks a month for my internet, and uh, very happy to be rid of Cox. And I just have to say this about Cox. When I first signed up for them, uh, I also had cable TV. And I got this solicitation from DirecTV. And I called up Cox and I said, uh, you know, hey, I can get exactly the same channels that I'm getting from you. And it's like 30 or $40 a month cheaper. And they said, we're not Walmart. We don't price match. No. <laughs> so I, I canceled my TV with them at that time. And like I said, I've been stuck with their internet all this time, but now I'm rid of them and, and <laughs> happier for it. Wow. Well, good. I want to look into that. I'm less than a mile from one of those um, tall telephone poles that looked like a pine tree on top that they try to disguise it with pine tree look to it. But, um, but it's a 5G tower and... So it should work well where I am. Thank you. Yep. My recommendation is a 19, excuse me, a 2022 movie called The Outfit. Mark Rylance, who's won an Academy Award, plays an English tailor named Leonard who's moved to Chicago from England to get away from his past. It's set in the 1950s. His administrative assistant, played by Zoe Deutsch, exemplifies quiet quitting before it became a thing. Some of his customers run the outfit, which is some branch of the Irish mob in Chicago. This is an old fashioned thriller where Leonard must tread very carefully to outwit this mob on a particular bloody night. Anthony, do you have a recommended for our audience today? Yeah, um, this one's a little different too. Um, Vegas is, you know, all the music that, that comes here and, you know, the people that go to the, the bands that come to Allegiant and all that, there aren't that many homegrown uh, Vegas bands. And over the year, there's been a few. I think Quiet Riot might have been. I'm not sure, but I think they were. And then there was The Killers. And, you know, they made it big. And the most recent one is a, a group called Imagine Dragons. And they're all from Vegas. Uh, I think the lead singer went to Bonanza High School or something like that. And they just played Allegiant Stadium, uh, sold it out. It was just a, an amazing show. And they've come out with a new video called Sharks. And it is all Vegas, man. I mean, it's all shot in Vegas at all these different venues and all these different areas. It's a really 
I like Imagine Dragons. I like their music. I don't know how I would describe it. You know, rock pop, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but I like them. They've got a unique sound. But this is everybody. I've got a, a bunch of young people working at my office. And I, I tell them, come see this video. Tell me if it's cool. And they're looking at me like, how would you know? And, <laughs> and all of them, they were like, that is cool. So it's called Sharks. Find the video by Imagine Dragons. Uh, we've got a link to it at our um, our YouTube page. So if you go to YouTube and search out Las Vegas Advisor, just look at, you know, you can find it there too. But look at it. I mean, you'll see Vegas, you'll hear a good song, and uh, that's my recommendation. Cool. We'll put a link to it in the show notes. So, okay. yeah. Cool. Make sure you got the right one because there's two of them. One is like a bunch of drawings and stuff, and that one's crappy. Make sure it's the one that is the actual pictures. It looks, there, you know, there's some homage there to to um, to um, the movie Casino, where they've got a, a woman throwing the chips up in the air like Sharon Stone did. Uh, there's another, or it's homage, I guess it is, to um, uh, Ocean's Eleven or 13 or 12, whatever it is, and you'll recognize all this stuff. Make sure it's the right one. Very good. So uh, Rich and I are clearly young enough to know what cool is, and so that sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Richard. Go out and hit lots of royal flushes, everybody. Good day.